Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having a wonderful day so far and for today's video, I'm actually going to be sharing my computer screen with you. I'm going to be doing another digital style tutorial with you guys on a photo editing software. In this case, it's Photoshop. And this topic was requested by one of my viewers on my past video that I created on how I scan, edit, and upload my work onto Society6. Today's video is especially created for artists that are just getting started exploring photo editing softwares and getting your traditionally made artwork onto a digital format. Now, if you're an artist and you're just starting to investigate ways of getting your artwork online in order to sell it, in the form of art prints or perhaps creating designs with your work that you can place on products. I highly, highly recommend you check out that previous video of mine that I'm going to be linking to down below in the description box as well as at the end of this video because in this one I am only specifically talking about how it is that I separate my watercolor illustration from its background in order to then create different designs with them that I upload onto shops like Redbubble and Society6. In my previous video, I walk you through the entire process of how I finish up a watercolor illustration, how I go about scanning it and creating my pattern design with it, and I even walk you through the process of uploading it onto Society6. And at the end of that video, I even share some pros and cons that I have learned myself after having been active in these kinds of online shops for a year and explain some of the kind of harsh realities that I have learned in my time on these platforms. All right, everyone. So before sharing my computer screen with you, I just want to say welcome to all you new people just visiting my channel for the very first time. My name is Erica and I share art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement type videos for aspiring artists every single Friday, so do consider subscribing. I would absolutely love to have you become part of my growing YouTube community. I also want to send out a huge thank you to my Patreon community members because you guys make it possible for me to keep creating these videos. Thank you so much, you guys. Today I'm going to be explaining three main Photoshop tools that I use either alone or in combination when I am cutting out my illustrations from their background. I'm going to be explaining the magic wand, the magnetic lasso, and my favorite, which is the pen tool. I really wanted to explain these three tools instead of only one because this way you can just explore all three of them and come to a conclusion about which one you're most comfortable using and which works best for your particular artwork and what it is you're trying to do. And just as a quick side note, because this is very, very important, this painting was scanned at 300 dpi. And I am never ever going to stretch it beyond the size that it is now at any point in my editing or designing process. Your paintings have to be scanned at least at 300 dpi if you're planning on printing it in any shape, way, or form. Alright, so I'm going to be doing these demonstrations using this one Monstera Leaf painting, and we're going to get started with the magic wand. So here, all I am doing is I am selecting my negative space or the negative area around my leaf and the little holes inside of the leaf by clicking on them with my magic wand. In Photoshop, if you want to select multiple areas simultaneously or add spaces to your selection, then you have to keep your shift key pressed down. If you do not keep your shift key pressed down, then the moment that you make your next click, the previous selected area is going to deselect. Once I'm sure I have all of my negative areas selected, I am going to go to the Select menu at the top and I'm going to choose Inverse. This is going to make it so that you are actually selecting the positive space, so your leaf. And now I am going to copy my selection onto a brand new document in Photoshop 
by going to the edit menu and clicking on copy or if you want a shortcut you can click on the command key while pressing on the letter C. And I'm going to paste my selection onto a brand new document here in Photoshop by creating a brand new document and then either going to the edit menu again and clicking on paste or by pressing down the command key and the letter V simultaneously. Now, the reason why I'm doing this right now is because I really want you to see for yourself what happens when you only make your selection and your cutout, so to speak, using only the magic wand tool. What I did here in my brand new document was I created a new layer and I just painted in a red square background behind my monstera leaf so that you can see all of the jagged areas and the imperfections that the magic wand leaves behind. And I really want you to take note of this because these things are a huge no-no and things you definitely, definitely want to avoid whenever it is you are preparing uh, an illustration or a piece of artwork that is going to be printed onto any kind of material. Notice not only all of the jagged areas and the nicks or places where the magic wand cut into my actual illustration, but also the dots that the magic wand selected outside of the illustration. Notice all of those tiny specks on the red. Well, all of those specks would be actually printed on your material, and that is a huge, huge no-no. So going back to my initial document, I just want to call attention to the tolerance level when you're using the magic wand, because depending on your personal type of artwork, if you're doing flat blocks of color and things like that, the magic wand just might work for you. So basically what the tolerance is, you can go ahead and change the number in that little field. And the lower the tolerance is, the less colors are going to be selected. So you can see right there that I changed my tolerance level to a level 10. And you can see all the little moving ants <laughs> that demonstrate the selected areas. Now, if I go back and I change the tolerance level to 100, you can see the huge difference in the areas that were selected. You can explore this for yourself and see if this is something that would work for your personal type of artwork. For me, it just seems a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a hassle because since I do watercolor, there are areas that are very transparent and I just find that no matter how much I play with the tolerance, it just the selection keeps eating into my illustration. So, having done this quick test, we can conclude that the magic wand is definitely not going to be enough in and of itself to make our selection or cutout of our illustration. I'm going to show you how I use the magic wand in combination with the polygonal lasso tool in order to make my selection a little bit more refined. So I did my initial selection exactly the same way I did it the first time around. I went ahead and with the magic wand selected the background as well as the little holes inside of my leaf. Then I went to the select menu and clicked on inverse. And what I am doing now is I am going to click on the polygonal lasso tool which you're going to find by clicking on the lasso icon, which is my third icon down in my tools bar. And right there, you're going to see three options. Click on the polygonal lasso tool. And using this tool, you are going to either add or subtract to your leaf selection, depending on the errors left behind by the magic wand. Now, remember what I said a bit back when we were doing the first exercise, that you need to keep the shift key pressed down if you want to add to the selection. And actually, if you notice, as you are using the magic wand, as well as other selection tools that we're going to see later on in this video, 
If you click on the shift key while using the magic wand, you're going to notice a little plus sign next to your cursor. This is going to help you remember that whatever you select while holding down the shift key is going to be an addition to your previous selection. On the other hand, if you click on the Alt key while you're using the magic wand, you're going to see a little minus symbol next to your cursor. So this means that if you hold down the Alt key as opposed to the Shift key, the Alt key is going to take away or subtract from your selection. I am going to go ahead and copy and paste my selection, having done a few refinements, onto a brand new document here in Photoshop, and then I'm going to see what else I have to do to it to improve it. So if I create my red square to place my Monstera leaf on, I can definitely see some jagged edges that I have to refine and just general improvements that I have to make. At this point, I can either decide if I want to use my polygonal lasso tool again, or I can also use an eraser. If you choose to use the eraser, you should know that there is a little menu on the top left hand corner. There is a little dot and a number and a little arrow that you can press down to change the size of your eraser depending on the area that you're going to go into. So here I am erasing all of the little white areas and specks I see throughout my leaf that I definitely want to remove. I want my edges of my illustration to be sharp and clean. Now you can continue refining and cleaning up your cutout as much as you'd like using the eraser tool, the polygonal lasso tool, or whatever tool you'd like. But one of the reasons why I personally don't go for the magic wand as much as it seems to be the fastest way to create your selection is because you also need to make sure that every single speck that the magic wand selected that is there in your image, that is outside of your illustration, is completely removed. And many times those tiny specks are very, very difficult to see. And you have to make sure that all of them are erased. So for me, as much as the magic wand seems to initially be the fastest option to create your cutout, it's actually not because you have to make sure that all of those tiny specks are completely erased at the end, which takes up a lot of time. Okay, you guys, so having explained the magic wand tool, I am now moving on to explaining the magnetic lasso tool. For me, it's not really my favorite. My favorite is the pen tool, which I'm going to explain next. But in my personal situation, it is definitely a step up from the magic wand. And it's something that a lot of illustrators out there do enjoy using themselves. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain how to use it. So basically, to use the magnetic lasso tool, you're going to select this tool. And then you're going to very carefully move your cursor. You don't have to click. You just move your cursor around the element you want to select as closely as possible to its outer limits or to, I guess you could call it an outline. Um, but you don't have to be super perfect because the paths are going to snap right onto and glue right onto the closest shape it can find. You can also add a path in manually by clicking if you want your selection to go past a certain area or include a certain area. Once you're done very carefully going around your entire element that you want to select, you simply click on the very first path that you lay down, and then this is going to enclose your selection, and you're going to see those walking ants again as opposed to the paths. So yeah, of course it's going to take a lot longer than just making a few clicks here and there with your magic wand, but at the same time you're going to have a lot more control over your selection. And also, with this magnetic lasso tool, you're going to make sure that no little specks very far away from your illustration are going to be selected. Now, at this point, I haven't erased the little holes inside of the leaf. So 
In order to do this quickly, I'm going to click on the magic wand, and then I click on these little negative spaces that still have to be erased, and I click delete. Now I know in the back of my head that I'm probably going to have to go into these areas and refine them a little bit more because we already saw that the magic wand leaves very jagged edges. But just for the sake of this demonstration, I just wanted to show you how the magic wand can still be useful um, in many cases, even after you have used a magnetic lasso or other selection tools. But there are a couple of reasons why I prefer using the pen, which I'm going to explain next, to the magnetic lasso. But right here, I went back to pasting this selection that I did using primarily my magnetic lasso onto my red square so that you can see that there are still a lot of imperfections left even with the magnetic lasso. I would say, just generally speaking, the edges are a lot less jagged than when I used only the magic wand, but there are definitely a lot of little nicks and extra white spaces I need to remove, etc. Alright, so moving on to the third and final selection tool, and this is by far my favorite because it allows me the most control, and I just, I guess it works best for my particular case. You can find it right there in the toolbar. So I went ahead and I clicked on it, and I'm going to start creating my selection by picking a point along the outer limits of my element anywhere along this outline and clicking there, that is going to create my first path. Now, one of the awesome things about the pen tool is that it allows you to very easily create both straight lines as well as curves. If you want to create a straight line, you simply create one path and click anywhere at a distance from that path. And that is going to create a straight line from one path to the next. If you want to create curves, like for example, with this particular case that we are doing right now, in which we are trying to select an element that has lots of curves, what you have to do basically is, if I want to create a curve, then the moment that I lay down my brand new path, I'm going to keep the left button of my mouse pressed down, and I'm going to move my cursor away from this final path that I've laid down. This is going to bring out a handle. And you can tell when you're creating a handle because these two little circles come out to either side of your path, which is a square. And handles can be very short or they can be very long, depending on how far away from your path you pull out your cursor as you're clicking on your left side button on your mouse. So right here, just so that you can see this a little bit more clearly, I am creating a straight line with my pen tool, and then I am creating another layer to show you how to make a curve, a little bit more, you know, more of a close-up so you can actually see this handle. Right there, I am clicking down on my left button and pulling out, out away from the path. And you can see this handle come out and create a curve. If you are testing out a brand new tool like this one, I highly, highly recommend that you open up a brand new document in Photoshop and just practice with it, test it out, and become used to it, okay, before you actually go ahead and try it out on a complex subject. So here I am just about to finish my selection of my illustration. And I am going to click on the first path that I laid down to enclose my leaf. And once my monstera leaf is completely surrounded by paths, there are still quite a bit of spaces and areas that I have to go back and refine. So what I do is I select my direct selection tool, which is a little white arrow that is in the bottom area of your toolbar. And as you can see, when you are using the direct selection tool, you can simply click on paths that you have already laid down and move them, as well as refine or move those handles around as well. So I am there, you can see me move my paths 
much more closely to the outer limits or the edges of my Monstera leaf to make sure that my selection doesn't include any white spaces at all. I am also modifying some of my curves by moving the handles around a bit and just going all around and checking that my selection is the best that it can be. And once that's done, I have to open up my paths window if I don't have it open already. So I go to my window menu, the drop down menu at the top. I click on paths and that is going to open up my paths menu. You can see right there the little leaf shape created by my paths. Now I want to select this shape created by my paths. So I'm going to click on the little lines that are in the top right hand corner of this path menu and I'm going to click on make selection. This is going to create the selection and you're going to see that this has been selected because the little walking ants are all around this shape. So once again, I have my leaf selected, but I haven't deselected the little holes inside of the leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and take the magic wand again and click on the little white negative spaces that I want to leave out. Now, just to finish up, I'm going to do this for one last time and paste this leaf onto my red square on this other document so that you can see for yourself the huge difference of having done the selection using the pen tool and using just a tool that allows you a lot more control overall. You can see that the only jagged areas are the areas that I selected using the magic wand, but everything else has super smooth edges. So yeah, it might have taken me longer than the magic wand and even longer than the magnetic lasso, but I am not going to have to spend as much time going back to certain areas and refining them as I did with those past tools, and I can be 100% sure that I'm not going to have all of these little specks anywhere outside of my painting. So at this point, I just go back in with my eraser tool or my polygonal lasso, whichever I find best for each area, and finish up refining my painting or my cutout so that I can move on to my designing process, make any patterns with it or a collage or whatever it is that I want to create with my traditionally made illustration now in digital format. If you are going to be printing your illustration onto things like t-shirts or mugs or something like that and you require a transparent background, simply delete the unneeded layers over in your layer menu in Photoshop and save your file as a PNG. These final PNG files are the ones that I upload onto Redbubble and Society6 in order to place them on different products. Using a brand new tool can definitely be aggravating and I always, as with everything that I do, I recommend beginners start out with doing something simple um, and take it step by step because it can definitely cause a lot of frustration when you jump straight away onto a complex subject. We all have different ways of working and different strengths and weaknesses and this is exactly why I like providing different types of tools and different ways to go about things so that you can explore for yourself what is going to be best for your particular situation. Okay, you guys, that is it for today. I really hope that you got something out of this tutorial. If you did, do leave me a thumbs up because it helps this channel out tremendously and helps my content get in front of more people. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And hey, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any tips regarding the photo editing software that you personally use as an artist 
or if you have any further questions, do let me know. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching and talk to you next Friday. Bye!